2020 was an outstanding year for both Tesla and SpaceX, as both of these companies achieved tremendous tasks from promoting the transition to EVs to sending people to the ISS. From a bigger picture view though, it's no doubt that SpaceX is much more important to humanity long term, as they are literally helping us expand outside of Earth. At this point in time though, Tesla does have the better financials and the larger market, so they are valued quite a bit higher than SpaceX. Given SpaceX's long-term outlook though, when will they overtake Tesla in terms of market cap? Well, starting off, let's address the elephant in the room, which is Tesla's market cap today. Just a few weeks ago, Tesla boasted a market cap of over $800 billion. This has since cooled down to about $648 billion, but personally, I still think that's way too high for where the business is today. I agree that in 10 or 15 years, Tesla will crush these numbers. However, there's still a long way to go, and I do think investors are pricing too much in today. With that being said, for our calculations, we're going to assume that Tesla's valuation cools down by 2030, and that's more reflective of their fundamental business. For instance, instead of a PE ratio of 1000, we're going to assume that the PE ratio comes down to about 50 to 100, which is in line with other growth companies like Amazon. By the way, for anyone who doesn't know, PE ratio is a ratio between how much a company earns and how much they are worth. Moving on to SpaceX, they currently aren't a public company, so they aren't really exposed to the same market movements that Tesla is. Currently, Elon Musk refuses to take SpaceX public, as he fears that this could hinder their progress in getting to Mars. Once they get to Mars and establish consistent back and forth travel though, Elon Musk is willing to take SpaceX public, as this is really the only way insiders of such a massive company who have been holding for decades can finally liquidate at least a little bit of their stake. In the meantime, we might see an IPO of the Starlink portion of their business. So that's the valuation outlook for both of these companies. In the long term, as in by 2040 to 2050, both of these companies will likely be public companies with mostly grounded valuations. With that out of the way, let's take a look at where each of these companies will stand in 2030 starting with Tesla. We're simply going to be taking a look at the biggest profit maker for Tesla, as delving into each of their sub-businesses would make this video 40 or 50 minutes long. Moreover, I suspect that 70-80% to 80 of their profit, if not more, will come from robo-taxis and autonomous software sales anyways. So we should be able to get a pretty good estimate of their profit potential by calculating their annual profit from robo-taxis and then adding about 20% to it to account for their other businesses. Tesla is looking to exit the consumer car market and fully focus on the robo-taxi market once they have level 5 autonomy working smoothly and regulatory approval on their side. Many Tesla enthusiasts think that Tesla will be able to achieve level 5 autonomy within the next couple of years, if not this year, and that robo-taxis are just around the corner. Meanwhile, skeptics suggest that robo-taxis aren't coming out till 2040 or 2050 or maybe even never. So, we'll take a middle of the road approach and assume that robo-taxis hit the road in 2030. At that point, self-driving software still might not be perfect, but I think it'll be more than enough to get government approval and start getting at least a beta group on the road. This means that at 2030, though Tesla will start deploying robo-taxis, the majority of the revenue will still come from regular car sales. So let's take a look at how many cars Tesla will be producing. Right now, Tesla has two main car factories, which are Fremont and Giga Shanghai. They also have two factories on the way, which are Giga Berlin and Giga Texas. Each of these factories are able to produce 500,000 cars per year or more, but we'll call it 500,000 just to be conservative. If Tesla continues to have two factories every single year moving forward, Tesla would have 20 factories by 2030, producing about 10 million cars per year. Tesla's average selling price today is still well over $50,000 because of the luxury models. However, as Tesla continues to grow and lower prices and add cheaper models and all of that, we'll probably see their average selling price dip to the low $30,000 range. Calling it $30,000, Tesla would be pulling in about $300 billion in revenue from car sales annually. If we add about 20% to that in order to account for Tesla Solar, Tesla Insurance, Tesla Semi Trucks, Tesla FSD, and all of that, we get a total annual revenue of about $350 billion. As for how much of this is profit, Volkswagen usually has a net profit margin of about 5%, and Toyota has a net margin of about 7%. Since Tesla does benefit from higher margin software sales as well, we'll use the higher of the two and call it a 7% net margin. This would mean that Tesla's annual net profit would be about $25 billion. At today's PE ratio of 1000, 
Tesla would actually be worth a massive $25 trillion. But as we discussed at the beginning, we'll assume that the P-E ratio cools down to about 100 like Amazon, meaning that Tesla would be valued at about $2.5 trillion. Meanwhile, SpaceX's most significant profit maker in 2030 would likely be Starlink. Elon Musk is still hoping to get to Mars using Starship within this decade. At this point though, I think the early 2030s would be more realistic. But even if SpaceX is able to achieve this outstanding goal by 2030, it wouldn't do much to their bottom line anyways. So we just have to concentrate on Starlink for this decade. As of August 2020, SpaceX was planning to support about 5 million Starlink customers over the next couple of years. With the amount of Starlink launches SpaceX is successfully completing, and considering that 700,000 people are already trying to get the service, SpaceX should easily be able to reach 5 million customers by 2025, especially with the help of Starship. So, we'll say that they're able to double that to 10 million customers by 2030, which is a pretty conservative amount. At $80 a month per customer, that totals to $9.6 billion per year. Viasat, who is another satellite internet provider, has a net margin of basically zero. However, that's misleading as they are simply reinvesting everything they make. If we take a look at their operating margin, it's about 1-2%, and that's more indicative of how profitable the business really is. SpaceX, on the other hand, doesn't have to rely on other companies to launch their satellites, and they are consistently working on lowering launch cost. So, we'll say they are able to achieve an operating margin of about 5%, leaving them with about $500 million in operating profit annually. SpaceX's other major source of revenue would of course be commercial launches, and as SpaceX continues to refine Falcon 9 and develop Starship, I have no doubt that they'll be able to grow their annual payload launch capability multiple fold. However, even now, this is not the most significant bottleneck. Rather, there's simply not many commercial customers looking to launch payloads. I mean, the main customers are really just NASA and the US military. And there's only so many ISS supply runs, Crew Dragon missions, and satellite launches that they'll need every year. In 2019, SpaceX pulled in an estimated $2 billion in revenue mostly from commercial launch contracts. In 10 years, SpaceX will likely easily be able to support commercial contracts totaling over $20 billion. But I'm not quite sure if there will be enough commercial interest, especially with the growing competition. So we'll play conservative and call their commercial revenue $10 billion in 2030. Elon Musk has previously revealed that relaunching a Falcon 9 rocket costs $15 million. Considering that they charge their customers $50 million for launches using reused boosters, they have a gross margin of 70%. That doesn't account for operating expenses though. If half of that goes to operating expenses, SpaceX would net about 35%. Assuming this goes down to about 20% as SpaceX lowers the price they charge commercial customers and competition grows, SpaceX would profit about $2 billion out of the $10 billion they pull in from commercial contracts. Adding this to the profit from Starlink, we get a total potential profit of $2.5 billion. In reality, SpaceX will likely turn around and invest all of this back into research and development. So they won't really net anything. However, this is approximately how much they would make if they focused on profitability. If we gave them a 100 PE ratio, they would be worth about $250 billion at this point. But here's the thing, SpaceX is already valued at $74 billion today. And considering the massive potential of space travel, I don't see the valuation multiple cooling down anytime soon. We may very well see a 1000 PE ratio with SpaceX, which is ludicrous. But they do currently have an infinite PE ratio, so it's definitely well within the cards. If we give it something a little bit more grounded like a 200 or 300 PE ratio, we're looking at about a 500 to 750 billion dollar valuation. I wouldn't be surprised if it's over 1 trillion though, especially if they reach Mars. As you can see, in terms of valuation, SpaceX would still be quite a bit behind Tesla's valuation in 2030. If we look further into the future, this gap actually only gets bigger. For example, let's take a look at Tesla in 2040. If they start deploying robotaxis in 2030, they would be able to deploy millions of robotaxis by 2040. We already determined that Tesla's production capability would be about 10 million cars per year by 2030. Even if they just dedicated 10% of their production capability to producing robotaxis, Tesla would be able to pump out 1 million robotaxis every single year, allowing them to grow their fleet to 10 million by 2040. Tesla thinks that each robotaxi will be able to produce $30,000 in profit every single year. With 10 million robotaxis, that would give Tesla $300 billion in profit every single year. At a PE ratio of 30 to 40, which is what Apple boasts today, Tesla would be worth $10 trillion solely based on the robotaxi business. Evidently, 
SpaceX would be nowhere close to that by 2040, no matter how many Starlink satellites they launch. Something else to keep in mind is that it's unlikely that Tesla doesn't ramp up robotaxis for a full decade. They do plan to fully transition to just robotaxis, so I suspect they'll have a much more aggressive transition plan. Maybe they'll transition 10% more of their production to robotaxis every single year. For instance, 10% in 2031, 20% in 2032, 30% in 2033, and so on and so forth. At that rate, Tesla would actually have 55 million robotaxis by 2040, pulling in $1.65 trillion in profit annually. Even at a PE ratio of 20, Tesla would be worth over $30 trillion. Looking even further into the future at 2050, Tesla could easily have more than 100 million robotaxis. But let's say they call it a day at 100 million robotaxis, and they simply turn to replacing about 10% of their fleet every single year. At this point, maybe there's more competition as well. So maybe their profit per car goes down to $20,000 per year. Even with that though, Tesla would be pulling in $2 trillion annually. Pair that with a super grounded PE ratio of 10 to 15, and Tesla would still be worth $20 to $30 trillion. As you can see, SpaceX simply won't appeal to as large of a market anytime soon. So when will SpaceX overtake Tesla? Well, likely not within this century. That doesn't mean that SpaceX won't be a monster company that's worth trillions of dollars itself. It might even reach a valuation of 10 trillion by the end of this century. But a valuation in the tens of trillions like Tesla is likely not within the cards until after 2100. Though SpaceX may not be the most valuable company in the world within our lifetime, I think we can all agree that it will likely be the most influential company of our lifetime. Do you guys agree? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you guys are fans of both Tesla and SpaceX. And of course, consider joining our Discord community to suggest future video ideas, and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.